Hi viewers, so Jen has gone through uh, definitions of street harassment and experiences of street harassment. Um, other than maybe the difficulty of calling people out on street harassment, it is very similar to calling people out in any situation when they're doing something that is wrong or offensive. However, particularly with street harassment, which of usually involves strangers in a public space, perhaps you're alone, perhaps you're in an isolated environment, this is just ten times harder. There are some people who are just like, why don't you just fight back, you know? Some people whose automatic reaction to a car horn beeping is this. Um, and some people whose reaction to a car horn beeping is just head down, look at the floor, fucking hope to God they don't turn around. Neither of these are wrong, but I really hate it when there are women and men who say, like, well, if you don't like it, why don't you just say something about it? Or when silence is often taken as a sign that you want the street harassment to continue. How? I don't even know. But um, basically, it your reaction is going to be based on your judgment of how safe you are in that situation. You know, I'm sure there are loads and loads of brave women who feel that they can, you know, run after these guys and um and sort of punish them in some way or, or show them that they're not that they're not scared of them which is epically badass and I wish that everybody could be able to do that but in most cases street harassment is going to be answered with silence um and this is totally normal and I'm not saying I'm not like encouraging silence or anything like this I'm just saying that people really have to appreciate how difficult it is especially as a woman, especially if you're alone, to stand up against a man, not just because of physical safety, um, you know, generally, you know, men are a lot bigger than women, um, maybe faster, maybe stronger, depending on the situation, um, but also the sort of psychological realisation that you, no matter what you say to them, no matter how you treat them after that, they're probably not going to care. They're probably actually going to be goaded and carry on with the street harassment as if it's some kind of like hilarious game. So that often stops me from, from calling people out on street harassment. Yeah, getting angry, especially to passing cars, feels really good. But obviously you're safe, you know, safer because this is a speeding car that's going past. Obviously you can never guarantee that they're not going to like get out of the fucking car and bundle you into the back. But I suppose that's maybe a not very sensible judgment that I make. Um, but I suppose I shouldn't have to be sensible. They're fucking harassing me. They're giving me unwanted attention. They're, you, they're treating me as some sort of object. And they are pressing their opinion of my body, essentially, onto me. Which I did not and will not ever invite. Um, so I suppose my reaction is my reaction. And there is no sensible thing about it, I'm not sure. Um, people will find that an episode of street harassment or assault requires reporting to authorities such as the police. Um, my sister, she commented on Jen's video, this happened to her last year. Her and her friend who are of school attending age were harassed by two men in a clearly marked van um, working for John O'Connor, which is a landscaping company where I live, name and shame, don't give a fuck. Um, basically, they said some really disgusting things to my sister's friend, which made her scared to walk back up to my sister's house and meet her. So my sister was late, I think this is the case, to where she was going because her friend couldn't walk back up the road. So my sister walked past these men with her and encountered the same kind of um, harassment um angrily retaliated um not extremely but as um enough to so that they could hear and they instead of shying away which is ridiculous i mean you know on their grounds of fucking common sense they're in a labeled van and everybody knows like who they are it's they've got their number like written all over it anyway they retaliated in an even more disgusting way and um made comments on 
my sister's sexuality, saying that, oh, you're a bit confused with sexuality. As if, because you're refusing the disgusting, slimy comments from an older man, that must mean that you're having issues with your sexuality, because it's so sexy to be, you know, harassed by a fucking middle-aged man in the middle of a street who you do not know, who you do not ever want to know, and he did not invite to look at you at all. It got so bad, and they got so frightened and offended that we informed the police. My sister described the situation. The reason was, initially, I was quite pleased with him. He um, made sure that he stressed that street harassment was something that he really wanted to enforce and punish, he made it clear that he was sure that John O'Connor, who they'd contacted, did not accept or tolerate street harassment. And they endeavoured to find the two men in question based on the information that we gave him. This pleased me. It showed that he was taking it seriously. And then the interview started. They interviewed my sister. And the first thing they asked was, what were you wearing? I'm not even kidding. It, um, even in lower level examples of street harassment, they're asking this fucking slut-shaming, rape culture perpetuating question, what are you wearing? This disgusting example of victim blaming, what were you wearing? Case discontinued, it just petered out, they couldn't find the men, um, because for some fucking reason, I don't know. Two young girls were too frightened to walk back to their house because two disgusting men decided that it was okay for them to launch this disgusting attack on them without their consent. You know, with no thought for how old they were, with no thought for their personal experience, with just no thought for them as people at all. And the policeman said, oh yes, no, we don't tolerate this, we don't tolerate this. John O'Connor said, we don't tolerate this. And what did they do? They fucking tolerated it. Nothing happened after that. Nothing went through. And for people who really don't like the police or the uh, justice system in this country, they probably wouldn't be surprised. And I wasn't surprised. But what I was surprised at was the hypocrisy, the fact that they kind of said they, they made it seem that they were being really politically correct and awesome and were trying to, and they just fucking failed on so many levels. Um, so my faith in calling out street harassment is significantly lowered by that experience. It, I probably would never report it, and that is really terrible.